Hello, I'm Will Sampson. Welcome to the Woodworking Network Podcast. Welcome to the Woodworking Network Podcast, where we explore the business of woodworking and what it takes to succeed. I'm Will Sampson. This episode is sponsored by FDMC Magazine. Today, we'll be continuing our interview with Dustin Hunter of Hunter Trim and Cabinets in Fort Worth, Texas, talking about the amazing transformation of his shop through applying lean manufacturing principles. But first, let's talk about a lean version of lean. Consultants love jargon and acronyms. I guess they figure that special language and alphabet soup shows that they are experts. Helps them sell their skills, raise their fees. I played the consultant game for a while, and I do understand that you have to constantly prove to your clients that your advice is worth paying for. But I always figured results did that best. Lean manufacturing continues to be a prime example of a good thing spoiled by buzzwords From my perspective these days, I think a lot of the terms we encounter in lean manufacturing are incredibly off-putting to the people who could use it most. It's full of Japanese words like Kaizen, Gemba, Muda, and Kanban, all brought over by the Toyota production system, one of the foundations of modern lean manufacturing. I remember my first encounter with TPS. Uh Uh-oh, there's one of those acronyms. I was working as a newspaper reporter in California in 1984, and I was told some famous Japanese efficiency expert was going to spend a day in a local factory. It sounded like it would be a good story, but I needed some background to cover it. The factory foreman dropped some books on my desk, including one by Shigio Shingo, the man who was coming to visit. Mr. Shingo worked with Toshio Ono, to develop the Toyota production system. But in 1984, most Americans had never heard of them or knew anything about what Toyota had done to revolutionize production in the auto industry. The books were dense, partly from being translated from Japanese to English. It was very technical and academic, not easy reading. First acronym I tried to decipher was SMED, which stood for Single Minute Exchange of Dyes. This was perhaps Mr. Shingo's most important accomplishment at Toyota. As I read more, I started to understand. I had previously run a small manufacturing business that helped put me through college, so being able to minimize and change machine setups quickly made a lot of sense. It made even more sense when I got to spend most of a day with Mr. Shingo at the RCBS factory in Oroville, California. The company is one of the premier manufacturers of reloading equipment for firearms ammunition. Mr. Shingo didn't know anything about that, but he had an amazing grasp of manufacturing processes. The foreman was flabbergasted at all of Mr. Shingo's suggestions. Touring the factory and working through his granddaughter as an English translator, Mr. Shingo talked to workers and pointed out potential improvements right and left. I'll never forget when the foreman asked Mr. Shingo how he could see all these potential improvements. Have you ever had a flat tire on your car? Mr. Shingo asked. If you changed the tire yourself, how long would it take? The foreman guessed eight or ten minutes. Mr. Shingo smiled and asked, Have you ever watched the Indianapolis 500? How long does it take them to change a tire? just seconds. He explained that the difference is lots of little improvements, making every part of a process as efficient as possible. Then he asked, how many 10-minute processes in your factory can you change to just seconds? What would that do for your production? Getting past all the special language This is the fundamental thing about lean that can be applied by anyone. Take a fresh look at everything you do. How can it be made to work better, faster, with no failures, and mesh with other processes more effectively? You still might need another set of eyes to see the opportunities. 
but you can get started without having to learn a new language. We also don't need a translator to talk to our guest today, but before we get back to Dustin, let's pause for a word from our sponsor. FDMC Magazine is your vital source of information to improve your woodworking business. Whether it is keeping you apprised of the latest advances in manufacturing, helping you solve your wood technology problems with Gene Wenger, or inspiring you with case histories about successful businesses and best practices, FDMC Magazine is there to be the sharpest business tool in your shop. Learn more and subscribe for free at woodworkingnetwork.com slash FDMC. Now let's talk some more with Dustin Hunter about his own lean journey. So what can you, I want to again make this as real as possible to people. What's your next improvement target that you're working on right now at your business? Um, we, we, we set goals every year, uh, sales goals, uh, production goals, um, which we, we try to keep everything simple. Um, you know, our, our goals, um, this year or, or to, to see a 15% increase, um, in production and, 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 and sales. Uh, so those go hand in hand. Obviously we have to have the sales to, to even have, a uh, the ability to have an increase. Uh, but we look at it every day, you know, we, 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 we track things and uh, we keep metrics on things. We're, we're, uh, we're kind of like a baseball team in a lot of regards. Um, we track everything and we look at it. We analyze the numbers and, and when we make an improvement, how does it affect the numbers? Which way did they go? Um, you know, so we can validate the improvement. And, and so many times it doesn't work or it has a negative impact. Um, but but the, the good thing about it is we learn so much from all those things. Um, and, and that's, that's what it's all about is learning and growing and just continuously growing, uh, and improving. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people don't understand about lean. They, they, they see it as, uh, oh, I'm going to do lean manufacturing. And then once I have that installed, I'll be running this great plant and I'm done. And it's not a, uh, do it and done kind of thing. It's, it's a continuous process of trying to always improve your business. And anytime you fix one bottleneck and improve flow, you just move that bottleneck somewhere else. Uh, right. So it's, it's, it's not the kind of thing that something is gonna solve all your problems. It's gonna create some problems for you, but the end result is improving your business. Is that, is that the way you see it, Dustin? Yeah, uh, you know, the, the word journey is associated with lean so many times, uh, and we've talked about it throughout this this chat this morning, and and, and that's what it is. It's a journey. Um, you know, it's uh, not as much about the destination as it is the journey to get there. Um, you know, when, 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 when I went to Japan with Paul, you know, we went to Toyota, which is where a lot of this is rooted. Um, and we were in a Toyota plant and we went into their showroom and they had a banner on the wall and it, um, you know, one of the things that it, it was talking about in this banner was their hundred year goals, um, which is just, just kind of mind boggling that these people are literally thinking about what their goals are for the next generation. Uh, they're thinking out a hundred years and, you know, just to put that in perspective, most of us can't even, you know set goals annually and hit them. Uh, but when you, you know, so it's a journey and it's how you get there and all the incremental things that happen that, that help your business to grow. And uh, it, it was just very, very eye opening to see how they look at things and relate it back to a journey. Cause that's what it is. Um, you know, we had a, we had a speaker when we were there and um, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, he said he was uh, giving a speech to a bunch of Toyota executives. They've been doing lean at this point about 40 years, and he 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 his his response to him was, "I think we're starting to get it." Uh, you know, they've been doing it for 40 years, and he thinks they're starting to get it. So <laughs> this yeah. is not a this is definitely not a a, a quick. Uh, get rich kind of thing. I, I will tell you, you can see the impact of this almost immediately. Uh, you know, I, like I said, we doubled the first year and quadrupled in the first five years. Um, so there, the, it can happen quickly, uh, but that's not, you know, it's about developing 
your people and, and growing your people and respect for people and taking care of your customer, uh, you know, things like that. But it's a, this is a long-term play, definitely not a short-term. Uh, so journey is a very fitting word uh, for lean. What would you do differently um, if you were starting lean from scratch today? You know, I don't know that there's any one thing or any big, big thing. Uh, we've definitely made tons of mistakes, uh, and it's humbled us and, and humbled our staff, and it's definitely humbled me. Uh, but it's those mistakes that has helped us to get where we are. Uh, so I don't, I don't really have any big regrets. Uh, maybe I, the only regret I would have had, maybe is to start it sooner. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of like that old thing about when's, when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a good analogy too. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't really have any big, you know, we've, again, we've made tons of mistakes and, and everybody does who, who gets into this, but that's, that's how we learn and that's how we get better. And that's how we uh, grow. So what advice do you have for shops that are just getting started with lean? Um, you know, I, I would start with two second lean. Uh, I think it's a good read to start wrapping your head around it. And you can start doing this at, at a micro level, um, you know, in your day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, I would get your head, you know, as an owner or a leader or a manager, get your head wrapped around the principles of it. And, and you know, uh, lean is, is definitely not a complicated or, or a hard thing to to understand. It is it – is, um, it's not easy to implement though. Uh, and what I mean by that is it's not hard to understand, but the day to day, um, you know, it's, it's, I'm not real sure how to, how to explain that, but um, it, it's, it's very simple, but it's not easy. That would right. be, I guess. Well, I think a lot of the things become counterintuitive too. You know, like yes. what we were talking about earlier about the batch production and trying to do batch one production. Um, and that being more efficient, that's that's counterintuitive to a lot of people and a lot of the things with lean are. But that's things that you find out in your improvement process, too. Like you said, that, that there's a lot of things you tried that didn't work, but that's part of it, too. So you find that out and uh, uh, make those changes. Now, I want to yeah. see if we can uh, handle some questions here from from the audience. One question we had was uh, folks were asking if they get a recording of this. And yes, we are recording it and that recording will be available. So you can share that with your uh, crew or, or uh, any of the, the folks in your, your uh, business that you're trying to uh, get them interested in, in lean. Um, now, a very timely question here. Um, Dustin, do you have any thoughts on, on how supply chain dust excuse me, supply chain disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic could affect your lean goals or, or anything you said you were talking about trying to move into a new facility, but that may be on hold. Yeah, I mean, we're just, uh, we're keeping out on the market is really what's driving that. It's not a supply chain. We really haven't seen any interruptions in our supply chain. Uh, and our market here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is actually still pretty strong. Um, but I, I will say this, to, you know, about the, the what's going on in the world today is, uh, and Lean is the, it's had a direct impact on, on our approach to this. And, um, you know, when we started Lean, we were very hand to mouth. Uh, it, it was very, you know, we need to get paid to pair people, to pair vendors. And, and with all these improvements that we've done over the years, it's helped our company to be financially more stable and, and specifically for these times right now, um, you know, it's just, it, it's let us sleep a little bit better to know, Hey, we can take care of our people. We're going to pay our people uh, regardless of what happens. Um, so it's given us a lot of peace and uh, it's, it's, it's positioned us to ride these kind of uncertainties uh, that we're definitely going through now. Um, additionally, it's, it's helped us to um, uh, leans allowed us to, really get back to our people. Uh, you know, we started this, we had zero benefits whatsoever. And uh, we now have all benefits that any company you could imagine, you know, from health insurance to bonuses, paid time off, uh, paid vacation, um, holidays, all these things that are, that are really not that, um, 
they're really not that common in our industry, um, especially with smaller companies. Um, so, but it's allowed us to do that and really give back to our people. Um, so. That's great. And you're mentioning smaller companies. Somebody is asking, what would you suggest with lean in a small shop of less than five people? Yeah, all the principles apply. Uh, you know, we're not we're not the biggest company. Uh, I've I've worked with some companies that are a lot bigger than ours. Uh, you know, I would say it's even it's easier to do in a smaller company because you you have less people to to um, convince and to get over that hump. Uh, but all the same principles apply. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that you know the the title of Paul Aker's book, Two Second Lean, has to do with the idea of of trying to make any kind of an improvement that just saves you two seconds every day, and then that two seconds adds up over time, and that applies to anybody, whether it's a one person operation or five people or ten or a hundred people or more, um, and. To, to get buy-in from your people to make those kinds of improvements on a daily basis. One of Paul Aker's uh, slogans that I always love is fix what bugs you. And, you know, if you empower the people in your plant to fix what bugs them, uh, just think of what that can do for things. Yeah. And, and you know, for me personally, and, uh, and I think it's had a, a big impact on a lot of our staff, it's, it's impacted the, not only my work life, but my personal life. Uh, you know, I see wait, I see waste everywhere I go, and I, you know, I fix what bugs me, and and I make improvements in my life and in my health, and you know, everything I do, I, I've trained my brain over the last uh, seven eight years to really not settle and really get things right and improve things, and not just accept, oh, this is the way it is. You know, I have a hand. I'm not a victim. Um, and, and and do something about it. It's an empowering thing um, that, that's that's had a really big impact on my life, both professionally and personally. How is lean affecting how you deal with clients during this pandemic? You know, we're um, we, we've we've converted all of our uh, or not all, but the majority of our design consults to Zoom meetings. Uh, you know, we had some pushback from customers at first, but. Uh, you know, it's it was a process, and and we developed a standard process, and uh, you know it was a little rocky the first couple of times, but every one we do, we get a little bit better, and we 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 tweak and we make it better, just like everything in our in our company. Uh, but that that's how we're we're overcoming that one, so we don't have to do face to face with people. That's that's great. The uh, one of the things that uh, um, I. I wish we had some pictures or people could see the, the video. I, I, you can go to YouTube and, and search for uh, Hunter Trim and Cabinet videos, and you'll, you'll see some of the ones that Brad Cairns has made at your, your plant. And some of those are really impressive, Ty, showing your office and how things are organized. Everything is labeled. All the tools are, are in you know, shadow boxes or Kaizen foam, which is a you know, shaped foam so that they're they're accessible and they're always, you know, when something's missing and it automatically causes folks to to put things back where they belong. Uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, kind of thing that uh, uh, really brings home what you're doing with with Wayne. Another question from our audience. How can you do one piece flow? using CNC and having nested base cabinet manufacturing, are you batching per room or you have some system? Yeah, so we, we do it by sheet count. Um, it's how we do it and we break it down by, you know, however many cabinets fit into, I think 30 sheets is our uh, cutoff is what we're doing. Uh, and then we kit everything. So um, once it's off the CNC, everything else is done in a one piece flow uh, from face frames to doors to drawers. Uh, but the CNC is definitely the one thing we haven't been able to get sequenced, but we, we've tried to make that batch as small as possible. And, and what we do is we run our CNC. It runs about a half a day ahead of our production. So literally things we're cutting in the morning are being assembled that afternoon uh, in, in entirety uh, or complete. So we just try to keep the CNC doesn't become the bottleneck on things. Uh, not generally, no. Uh, yeah. We, we we put a lot of effort into the, into that. 
Yeah. I, I, I visited plants where they have what I call the, the screwdriver problem. They're, you know, making screwdrivers, you need two parts, a shaft and a handle. And if they make lots more handles than shafts, they can only make as many screwdrivers as they have shafts. And right. a lot of guys don't understand that. They think that, the, oh, if I just make more of this part that I'm making, I'm going to be more successful because it's production. But it's not production that's helpful to throughput. Yeah, it's about balancing the operation, too. You know, uh, we need everything running balanced. Uh, you know, like you said, whatever our weakest link is, uh, whether it's our CNC, our drawers, our doors, our face frames, our assembly, you know, whatever department, as much or as much as they can do, it's as much as everybody else can do. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting way to balance it all out, uh, but it, it's, it, it, makes it, it makes it fun. Somebody is asking, at what point was it that you saw it, it became necessary to buy the, the CNC? What, what was the, the tipping point there? I think it was a combination of things. I think it was volume of work we had coming in, um, finding good, good staff uh, or, or uh, qualified staff is, is hard for everybody in our industry, I think. I think that's a universal thing. So it was the, the volume of work coming in uh, that we needed uh, a boost in production. Um, but, uh, the, the precision and the accuracy, uh, was, was the other big one. Um, you know, cutting things out by hand, you know, you, you risk, you know, a guy miss, miss cutting something and, you know, um, those kind of things. So the CNC is never wrong, uh, as long as it's programmed correctly, I would say. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's an issue. I appreciate you, you, uh, joining us for this. Yeah. I, I wonder, uh, Say thanks to you guys for having me. Uh, this was hopefully we uh, helped somebody today or, or sparked an interest in, in somebody today. Uh, you know, uh, the lean community is an open book community, and I'm no different. So uh, if you if you have any questions, reach out to me. You know, find us on our on our website. There's a contact us page. Uh, what you'll find with me and so many people in this community is we're open book. So call me and and, and twist my ear. We'll schedule a call. I'll talk to you till till. So I'm blue in the face uh, as long as you want about this stuff. I'm very passionate about it. So if there's anybody out there that, that wants some more or, or wants to talk about something specifically, reach out. I'm happy to do that. That's it for today. You can find all of our podcasts at woodworkingnetwork.com slash podcasts and in popular podcast channels. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks again to today's sponsor, FDMC Magazine. If you have a comment or topic you'd like us to explore, contact me at will.sampson at woodworkingnetwork.com. And we would really appreciate it if you fill out the survey at woodworkingnetwork.com slash podcast hyphen survey. Thanks for listening.